When I first started fighting and guys would hold pads for me or whatever, they would say, oh, you hit pretty hard, you know, but it wasn't until I got a little bit more technical and, and was able to land that power in the right places and set the right shots up that I started knocking guys out. Right hand and hook. Dan Henderson will go down, without a doubt, as one of the all-time greats. He's a legend in mixed martial arts. Dan Henderson has the kind of power where he can change the fight in an instant. Dan Henderson still is capable of shutting the lights out. That nuclear weapon of a right hand is still potent. Well, it does not get a whole lot bigger or better than this Shogun Hua. Taking on the fellow mixed martial arts legend, Dan Henderson. My game plan was to go in a little bit more conservative, kind of pick my shots and, and not really wear myself out. I felt like I was about to win that first round and I caught him. Huge left hook landed, Shogun appears to be rocked. Next thing you know, I'm on my, I'm on my butt. Oh, that goes head on now. And knock me down again the second round. Oh, huge up for cut lands plus for Shogun. I just knew that I was just going to stay there and recover on, on the ground in the second round. Barring a miracle here, this could put Henderson down two rounds to none right now. Third round, I wasn't thinking anything other than I needed to get moving, be more aggressive, and, and that's exactly what I did. Went for a takedown, defended that, and I pushed him right into my right hand. Oh, huge right hand for Hendo! Dan Henderson oh. has done it! It felt great to have that type of ending on it. it you know, I don't think it was my best performance. I guess it's the end of the fight that counts. The matchup against Fedor came about because you know a lot of the Pride fans wanted to see that matchup for a long time, and as soon as they asked me, I said absolutely. Fedor always carried that aura about him that he was untouchable, and, and I think at one point he was, and he came in, seemed like uh, in pretty good shape and ready to fight when I fought him. I would have liked to have eased into it a little bit, but uh, he came out ready to fight. Fedor trying to jump on Henderson quickly. Left hook by Henderson. Backs up Fedor. He was right on me coming at me and until I rocked him a little bit. Amelia Nenko rushing in, Henderson down. When Fedor knocked me down, I didn't feel dazed at all. I just waited and moved in tight like I normally would react. I have a single leg, came out the back door. And When I hit him, I knew it hit hard, and right, you know, right on the chin from underneath. Definitely from that position when I was underneath, I just wanted to get back to my feet. He really couldn't react enough to, to cover up from the position I hit him. I don't think he expected it to come from that angle either. It's one of the biggest victories of my career. I've been a fan of his like anyone else, and, and you know, respect him for what he's done in the sport and, and, and how he carries himself, and, and uh, it makes the, the accomplishment much bigger. Dan Henderson is still chasing UFC glory tonight. We'll see if he can produce one more shining moment as he takes on Tim Boach. Tim Boach going into that fight, you know, he throws more looping punches and rushes at you a lot of times. So I needed to be patient. And when he kind of rushes at me, make sure that I'm just firing my right hand right down the middle. And almost the first flurry, he rushed me. I stepped back, fired right down the pipe. Ooh, he's oh, he's done. Hendo stumbles Boach early, follows up with a knee. Hit him pretty good and followed up and, and they stopped it. Henderson pours it in! In! Dan Henderson! It's always nice to uh, kind of test yourself and it, it come out on the good side. I really appreciate all the support from, from all the fans. I uh, felt the energy from you guys and uh, you know, that's, that's why I'm here and that's what I like love about the sport. My fight with Hector Lombard was, uh, yeah, I knew it was gonna be one of those fights that we both throw hard, and I know that he comes out swinging pretty good to begin with. Lombard being very respectful of the power of Henderson. I timed him real well and, and caught him every time he kind of came in. Oh, him. he tagged him! Hendo looking for that H-bomb! Kind of rushed in and my hands went down and he kind of caught me a little bit, knocked me a little bit silly. Oh! Now Lombard on top. As I was getting up, my hands are on the ground. I'm 
almost up to my feet and he throws a knee to my head. For all my experience that I have, I still did the wrong thing and, and kind of glanced over at the ref to see if he saw. At that time, Hector caught me with another one and, and knocked me down again. And at that point, I think I decided that I wasn't going to win that round and I want to recover and I just kind of held in, held him in uh, guard and and uh, stayed on the ground and knew I needed to get get my butt moving in round two. Let's see whose gas tank was affected more by the first five minutes. Kind of fainted a takedown up to a to a head kick, which never landed one. I landed, I've landed him in practice a good amount, but never landed a head kick in a fight. And I think because he's so short and he kind of squatted down when I fainted. Oh, he head, head kicked kick. him. Kind of dazed him, didn't knock him down or anything. And saw his head sitting there and I just gave him a back elbow. And oh, he hurt Henderson, oh. and it's all over! Dan oh. Henderson by Nato! Oh. Unbelievable! Thankful that I was able to react the way I did. And the head kick I've done in practice, but you don't practice those reverse elbows on your training partner, it's very easy without them complaining. So it worked out well for me that night. The whole crowd that was there it was just amazing that night as well, you know, during the whole fight, chanting my name and it was, uh, it was a special thing to hear. I appreciate you guys giving me that extra energy to keep on going and that extra drive. I'll tell you what, he's a tough guy, but that felt good. Prior to UFC 100, Michael Bisming and I were coaches on The Ultimate Fighter, and it was the first time they did country versus country, USA versus UK. During the show, Michael talked a lot of smack. What do you want me to do? Bend over and take it up the ass? Why do you like where so you're gonna destroy them two? I know, and it's burning you, obviously. Taking it to the Yanks, is that the best you've got? And a lot of people weren't fans of his after that. Bisping and Henderson will finally do battle. Man, Henderson's looking to load up. Michael Bisman kind of circles the wrong way a little bit. Then, yeah, I think he's corrected that problem a little bit now. He just circled to his left too much into my right hand, and I missed uh, a few times, but hit him pretty good a couple times. Henderson teeing off on Bisping. He just didn't like the power, and after I hit him, he tried to shoot and take me down. Dan Henderson actually smiled at him, like, are you kidding me? You gonna take me down? The crowd kind of laughed at him and made me chuckle, made me, made me smile when I stuffed his takedown. Man, Henderson is just stalking Michael Bisping. I threw a number of right hands in that fight, but most of them just barely missed the mark. And, you know, it just uh, was a matter of time before I landed a good one, and down he went. That's it! Oh, he's Out down! Cold. He's part of MMA history because of that one knockout that I got on him. I got thanked multiple times for it. People tell me all the time that they're thankful for that and, and uh, must have felt great or it was great. And I said, yeah, I, I mean, it, it felt awesome. I got to do it. So I got, I got to be the one to punch him in his face and, you know, try to shut him up, but I don't think it worked for very long. Oh, oh he, he got him. rocked. He Pitt's heard him with a he left. Him and again. Michael Bisping, it. it's the new it. UFC middleweight champion of the world. When Bisping won the world title, I think I was just as shocked as everybody else uh, was. You know, I don't think he's really knocked anybody out like that before. People say I got no punching power. I knew I could punch. In the past, Michael Bisping has asked for a rematch, and you know, there really wasn't any reason for me to to give him a rematch or even to consider it because he really had nothing to offer until he, he won that belt. I'm the champ. People call me champ and, you know, it feels good. I'm not gonna lie. I never asked for it. The fans asked for this fight. They're the ones that made this fight happen. Didn't hurt that Bisping wanted the rematch and, and wanted that fight as well. Maybe he thinks I'm getting too old and now he can beat me. Dan Henderson is famous for one thing. That's knocking me out at UFC 100. I made your career, Dan. And after UFC 204, that will be eradicated. He'll never get that UFC 100 loss back. He can say whatever he wants. I know what I know in my heart and in my mind, and, and I know that I'm going to beat him up when I fight him again. And it doesn't matter what he says beforehand. None of that matters.
when he's laying on the canvas.